Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you like and you subscribe to my channel because we got new things coming out all the time. This is an exciting time we live in. You're going to enjoy all the videos because God is moving by His Spirit. I'm going to be teaching you how to walk in the Spirit. I'm going to talk to you about angels. We're going to have lots of conferences that are going to come to you. So make sure that you always are ready for what God's going to do for you. Thank you, Father. Father, I know that you always hear us when we pray. Father, I know that you have already answered. You have sent your word and you've healed us. His name is Jesus, and he's in this room, and he's touching with compassion everyone that needs healed. Healing is in the room. Jesus is here. Father, because you hear us, you answer. Ask, and you shall receive, says the Lord. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door is already opened. Bright is your future, if you will just walk through. Stop looking at the waves. Stop looking at the storm clouds. Gaze into my eyes, because that is where I formed you and breathed you into your mother's womb. I am your Lord. I am the Lord of the storm. I am the Lord of the waves. Come to me now. Your future is bright. I have a expected end for you, plans for you to prosper. Who is it that stands against you? He has turned and ran. Because I am the Lord God, there is no one else. I am high and lifted up, but I also dwell with him who is contrite and humble in spirit. I am with you today because you've humbled yourself under my mighty hand and promotion is coming. Each one of you will receive promotion. Graduation is today. If you'll listen carefully, the door behind you is shut. And you're going forward. Ha, ha, ha. The Lord sits in heaven and laughs because his enemies are coming to nothing. Which means you're coming to something. All the redeemed say amen. amen. Praise God. Well, that was some introduction. My God. Thank you, Dean. Praise God. Oh, dear Lord. Dear Lord. You, you know what's interesting is, is that you just need a couple crazy friends in your life. And I, I mean that seriously. I would not be here if it wasn't for crazy friends. Crazy friends that believe God. That said yes when everyone else said no. There were some crazy friends. You know, they, they kind of look cross-eyed a little bit, but they're, they're full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You know, those are the people I look for. See what I mean? Everybody's waiting for the glory, but, you know, the glory has already come. And the move of God has already started. The angels told me about it two years ago. Yeah. And they said, you know what? We can make you look good. Just start jumping in now. It's going to take a couple years for everyone else to know that it's already started. I said, really? I said, yeah. He said, just go ahead and jump in now. The glory has come. We're on the ground. We are ready. I'm going to be brave. Don't get mad at me. Everything I say is for your benefit, not for mine. I didn't want to come back. I wanted to stay with Jesus. We had things to do, you know. He's got plans for me. But he said, first, I want you to come back just for a couple minutes. And I want you to tell people the truth about me. I want you to tell them that I'm not weak. That I'm not working against my own people. You know, I didn't send Jesus back, he said. You know, the Father sent Jesus, you know. But Jesus offered to go. Because he wanted to purchase back the family. 
because it was stolen from him. The father wants a family. So Jesus agreed to go back. When Jesus came back here, he came back in a conquest with an attitude to drive out the devil, to completely destroy the works of the devil. And we're trying to break a deal with him. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. Anyway, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be brave. Okay, here, here's the thing. I have certain friends in my life that are crazy. But see, in heaven, they're normal. And I found out something, that if you want to be normal here, if you want to fit in, then you have been compromised. You've been deluded. Because if you want to have an edge in prayer, like when Jesus prayed, Father, I know you always hear me. Not, Lord, are you there? Are you kidding me? The one who thought of you and breathed you into your mother's womb, you want to know if he can hear you right now? He thought of you. I'm going to read something to you because I'm going to be brave. But I want to tell you something. In heaven, Christians are known by what they believe in their heart and what they say with their mouth. And what they do, do they do what Jesus did? Well, what did Jesus do? He went around healing everyone that was oppressed to the devil. Went around doing good. So Jesus didn't get sent back to work against God. So he didn't make anyone sick. Jesus didn't make anyone sick. You find one place in the Bible where it says it. He didn't come back to make anybody poor. Listen to me. Don't shut me down. The woman with the two mites, he stood there. He turned to his disciples and said, she gave more than anyone. But he did not tell Judas to go after her and give her what was in the black bag. He did not go up to her and stop, and stop her and give her anything. He didn't encourage her. He did nothing. He complimented her to the disciples. And she went home, and she probably didn't have any money for eating, according to the scriptures. Did Jesus stop her? Oh, come on, please. If we break through here right now, I'm going to tell you some stories that I have been holding back from. I'll tell you some stories, but you've got to agree with me now. You've got to break the doubt and unbelief in your life. Once you meet him, you find out that he is on a conquest to destroy the works of the devil. The devil is here to steal, kill, and destroy from you. That's what he does. He's going to kill you. He's going to steal from you. He's going to destroy you. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. It would have been nice if he just said to give you life, but he said more abundantly. The Jesus I met is a strong person. He's one that has an attitude. He wants us to be what John chapter 1 verse 12 says. He said to them that believed and beheld him in glory, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. That word there is exosia, not dunamis. He gave them the authority to become sons of God and daughters. And when I came back from heaven, I came back with an attitude because I knew that my king, now you got to understand something, I've already seen him come back. I got to see him come back with that giant gold crown on his head and all those angels and all of you with him. I already got to see it. And the beams that came from his face hit me, woke me up, and woke my wife up. She got hit by the glory, too, that came from his face. And she wasn't even having the vision I was. She, she woke up. So when I came back, I needed crazy friends. I needed crazy friends like Jesus. I couldn't find anybody that believed like I did, except in the history books. You want to know why? Because there was these pillars that no one was ahead of them with a machete. They had the machete in their hand, and they were going through the jungle making a path for you. And we have not discerned our day of visitation. Everything 
that we stand on right now has been built on the law and the prophets and the apostles. Did you know that the law did not go away? Jesus didn't come to get rid of the law. He came to fulfill it. That means that now in you, by the power, you can fulfill every, every aspect of the law, every demand of that law. And if you love one another and you love God with all your heart, you'll fulfill every law that was ever written. And we wouldn't even need police officers anymore. And they can park the fighter jets. But see, because we don't govern ourselves by the Spirit of God, we have to have someone govern us. You have to have somebody out there with a radar gun. It's the only way to deter you to, to do what you're supposed to do. So that that minivan with all those little kids that goes through the intersection because the mom's yelling at the kids, so you don't go through and hit her. You have to have rules. You don't go past a certain amount of speed when you go through a light because you're supposed to be thinking of someone else. That minivan with, those, with that mother that's turned around goes, goes through the light. Okay, she messed up. But what, what happens is, is if you are not alert, if you are not thinking of others, you see what, what I'm saying here? If the laws are for you to think of others. In heaven, everyone thinks of everyone else. When I met people in heaven, they would start talking about what Jesus did for them. They would start testifying to me. I, I sat for hours. I sat with, for four hours with one person that you would all know that just passed away not too long ago. I sat for four hours. He was taken early, and he wanted to talk to me. So for four hours, he sat and talked to me about revival. He talked about how he had not finished what he was called to do because his body gave out, and he was taken early. And he said, I'm so glad that God's chosen you to take that upon yourself. Now, you have that mantle on you. I'm like, what? And he says, here, here's how you do it. And he started going for the steps of revival with me. And he says, this is what you do. And did you know that most of the people in his ministry are now working for me or associated with me? Did you hear what I just said? I just need a couple crazy friends. But do you see what God does? They don't know that. They didn't know at the time that I, was visit, I visited that guy. All of a sudden, they're called to help me. Is there anybody here? You just need a couple crazy friends in your life. Jesus was sent back on conquest. There are people in heaven right now that are depending upon you to hear from God, to listen to your angels, to listen to the word, and to do the works of God, to, to wrap this thing up. Every angel that's in this room right now is praising God over what I'm saying to you because they want you to engage them. Did you know that they represent the will of God? The angels of the Lord represent the will of God. So when I was visited a couple years ago, I was told to do this. I told my wife, I got to go to Washington, D.C. So I got to get a flight. I could not get a flight on my own airline. I couldn't even buy one. This is child resistant. Can somebody open this for me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So the Lord told me, You're, you have to go. You have to go on this date, and you have to be there. I'm going to walk you into the glory right now. You ready? All right, now listen to everything I'm going to say to you. Obedience is everything. You want to be spiritual? You want the power? You want the glory? You want to be like angels? You want to walk where they walk? It's obedience. Because God is speaking. You need to go back to the last time God spoke to you, and you need to do that. Now, I was sent back, not because I wanted to come back. I was sent back because someone here needs to hear what I got to say. Because their life is going to be rerouted, and it's going to change history. Jesus showed me that there was a domino effect that happens in the spirit. The angels come. He said, the angels come. I'm going to come. I'm going to stand. He's right here beside me right now. Jesus is right here beside me. He promised that he would be, and he is. He said, I'm going to lean on you. And when I lean on you, I'm going to knock you into the other realm, and then you are going to knock other people into the other realm. It's going to be a domino effect. 
He said, you're, you're, you're going to look so good, but it's not going to be you. Because without me, you're nothing. But with me, you're everything. I'm going to make you look good. You're going to look like a prophet. And he speaks in my ear and he tells me what to say. And then after I'm done, I get taken back to my room. And I call my crazy friends. But see, I want to be around people that want to walk with Jesus. That know that they can't take another breath without him. That each breath is a gift to them. So I told my wife, the Lord's telling me that I'm just going to have to find another crew member that doesn't want to do that trip. And I'm going to have to find an overnight in D.C. at this hotel. And I'm going to have to show up there. So I found someone who didn't want to go to Washington, D.C. Imagine that. <laughs> There's lots of people that probably don't want to go to Washington, D.C. I ended up on an overnight with my crew. I went up and ate with them on the... The hotel has a circle. It's right across from the Pentagon. It has a circulating uh, spiral thing, that, uh, restaurant. You know, I pay, you know, like 30 bucks for a piece of bacon, you know. <laughs> so it was keto diet. And as I'm there, the power of God is so strong. And I'm, these, these, these crew members are Christians. but they're not crazy friends. Now listen to me. I'm walking you into the glory right now. Are you ready? I sat there and shared with them. And don't be get nervous if I go to the edge. I was a diver. Springboard. So I do that. I can even turn around. You want me to do a backflip? I sat and talked to them about the Lord Jesus Christ and about the power of the living God. And they just looked at me and shut me down. And I was so grieved that I could hardly breathe. And I, and I felt like I got to call my crazy friends. I got to go call my wife. I got I to gotta, I gotta, gotta talk to people that are crazy enough to believe God and walk in this life to reign and rule with an attitude that, that Jesus had already transferred to me through a conquest. So I went back to my room, and I'm almost in tears. And see, when, I get, when, when God gets grieved, I get grieved. But when I get grieved, I can't breathe. And I don't want anybody around me. When God gets grieved, I get grieved. And the Holy Spirit, he, pull, he starts to pull because he's grieved. And, and um, you know, it happened in South Africa, 31,000 people in that church. And the, the, the pastor there, he told me, he said, I want you to speak on this. I said, well, because you're the pastor, that is what I'll speak on then, even though the Holy Spirit has something else for me to say. I was so grieved. So as I started to say it, I found that because I wasn't speaking the message that I was supposed to speak to that place, you know, 1,500 pastors came in to hear me, plus the 31,000 in that church. And so I'm speaking by the power of God, but then all of a sudden, it's like I started to say I. I started to talk about myself because I was getting out of the anointing because I was being restricted. Is there anybody here? So, so the Holy Spirit is one of my crazy friends. And without him, I can't do anything. So this is what he said audibly to me. He said, if you say I one more time, I'm going over there and wait until you're done talking about yourself. Because this is my ministry, not yours. See, some of you... You know, he, you know, he's just your little comforter blanket, and Jesus is, kisses your, you know, your wounds and everything. He is all that, and the Spirit is all that. But the Spirit also enforces. He's an enforcer inside of you of the blessing. He enforces the truth. He speaks the truth. He leads you into all truth. And if you don't want the truth, then you can be deceived. Did you know he'll let you be deceived? Those are the crazy friends I don't want. Okay, so I walk into this room, my room, my hotel room. And I'm grieved. And I turn, and I still have my bags right there, haven't even unpacked. And we've only got a few hours, you know. We get there around 4 o'clock, we eat. Then we got to get up at, at 2.30 a.m. and then be at the plane by, by uh, 4 to get it pre-flighted. 
So I'm thinking, well, I'm going to pray in tongues for a couple hours just so I can deal with what just happened. You know, like I have to get drunk just to deal with people. I have to get drunk in the spirit just to deal with people, just to tolerate. I have to get drunk. Is anybody there? You know, you have to pray in the spirit until you're practically out of your mind just to go outside your house. Especially if you get on the highway, everybody wants the space you're in. Why is that? Okay. And I kid you not, there were six men, six men standing in my room with robes on behind a veil. And I went like this to look at my bags, because this is what I do when I'm in the spirit. See, I, sometimes I go like I've gone to countries before I went there and scouted out the land. And then I tell my wife about it. I says, we're going to be going to this country. And six months later, we get the invite. And then everything happens exactly as it was in the dream or in the vision. So this is normal to me. So I have to test to see if I'm in a vision, if this is really happening. I, I have to speak in tongues now because I don't even know how to explain it to you. But you're a spiritual being. You're in a body, and you have a soul. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. It wants you to stay here. Your body also wants you to stay here. So at night, they have meetings without you, and they vote you off the island. But your spirit man, your spirit man wants to be free. Your spirit man wants to dream. Your spirit man wants to go to the throne room. The spirit man wants to minister to people and slap a couple people too. But anyway, your spirit man knows no doubt, no fear. Nothing ever stops your spirit man because the Holy Spirit, it says, he who joins himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Doesn't it say that? Is it still in there? Did the, did the NIV take it out? The nearly inspired version? So what else are you going to take out of the Bible? If you start taking out the power of God, what's left? Paul gave up all his knowledge, and he said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. I came to you in the demonstration and the power of God. Okay, so I had six men in my room. They're smiling at me. They're crazy. They're behind a veil. They are handsome angels. The most beautiful angelic beings I've ever seen. Smiling. They said, we heard you were coming. And we're glad you came. I go, what? He goes, yeah. This was all set up for you to be here in this room. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I was told, okay, oh, obedience. I was told whatever it took. I had to work for three days. I had to work three days, a three-day trip just to obey God to get a flight to Washington, D.C. Does anybody follow what I'm saying? Okay, I get there, and there are three, there, there, there's these, these, these crew members that are not ears, they did not have ears that hear or eyes that see. But I did. So guess who gets the angel visitation? I'm walking into glory right now. Did you know that? You, you might as well just drink. Y'all, some of you are not, you're not, you're too sober. I'm waiting. I'm waiting until the power of God hits you and knocks you into the realm that you're supposed to walk in. Sometimes you just need to get over yourself. Come on. It is so, there's gold. There is gold in the air right now. The glory is here. The king of glory is here. Well, thank you for joining me for this video. I believe that it really ministered to you. Make sure that you check out my website, kevinzada.com, and the Warrior Notes School of Ministry as well as on the tab there. You can sign up for that. I've got plenty of courses available to you. I just want to pray for you because the, the Holy Spirit is just telling me that there is a revelation. There's a spirit of revelation that He wants to give you. Like Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 23, he said, and I'm just going to pray this over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that everyone that's watching has the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. And I pray, Lord God, right now that the eyes of their heart be enlightened. Thank you for joining me. May the resurrection power of Jesus Christ be with you.